Hey guys, it's your girl Shamar. What's up, Israel? How y'all doing today? Guys, in an episode or two back, I told you guys, I mentioned Solomon. Why did I mention Solomon again? I mentioned the uh, upper and lower pools that Shira built. Right, guys? Shira. We're going to cover her soon. I just got to hone in on something with her, but I'm pretty sure I'm seeing what I think I'm seeing here. That Shira may have been the one to build the clean energy we were using, guys. All right? But we'll get to that because I told you that Shira built pools. And some say that it was Solomon that took over those pools too, right, guys? <laughs> anyway, bringing in Solomon, I felt that it was prime time to bring in Solomon. Okay? Because I talk about this guy a lot, but I've never really gone ahead and covered him. This, this solo man, right? David's son. Great King David, guys. You know, I hope y'all had a good week. I did. I did. Um, got me some much needed rest. Um, put away my grief. And I'm back, guys. I'm back. And I want to talk about our pipeline. It's something significant that happened when Solomon was crowned. I did an episode a couple of Oh gosh, guys! It was way at the beginning of um, of my journey with uh, with this Taurus study. Um, I did an episode concerning uh, the rightful ruler, right? Because Israel's rightful ruler is not at the wheel right now. That's Shiloh, right, guys? Shiloh stands for the rightful ruler. Right now, we have Judah with the scepter, right? Mm -hmm. And what we saw transpire was significant when Solomon was crowned. Come on, y'all. We back for a family feud. And let's talk about David's son. If there are any David lovers here, you better leave the building now. Because I'm here to tell you on the front line, we are not David lovers. We are Israel lovers. <laughs> okay. We're not confused over here by what went down in the tribe of Judah, how they left the door open for this pipeline that you see in the background. You see that picture, right, guys? Mm -hmm. That's the Keystone Pipeline. There's a certain president that wants to get into play and wants to uh, expand that pipeline. Okay, they want, they want to expand it. They, want to, they need more money. You know, you got the, the, the folks that want to exploit. I listen to, um, I put it guys in the community page about big oil. You guys got to listen to that. All right. We're going from Rockefeller to Obama to Trump and that. Okay. You guys got to listen to that. Listen to Obama say, we're going to get every American resource every energy resource and exploit it, basically. The presidents want, they want to build a bigger pipeline. They're not satisfied. Mm -mm. You see this proposal for the Keystone XL? That's to enlarge the pipeline, guys. Let's talk about Solomon and what David did right here in 1 Kings 1, and I want to say 33. In 1 Kings, this person asks, where was Gihon? And why did David instruct Solomon be taken there to be anointed? He could have been anointed anywhere. After all, David was uh, anointed in Hebron, right? It, right in Chevron, the Confederacy. So we see that David is bestowed Chevron, Hebron, the oil. All right, guys, the takeover took place. Judah. All right, come on, good old Judah. So David has this thing where, you know, uh, he's overcome Absalom. 
right? And one of his other sons is running around saying, I'm going to be queen. I'm going to be king. I was going to say, I'm going to be queen. Might as well, right? Um, he said, I'm going to be king. I think it was Adonijah. Anyhow, David does this instead in 1 Kings 1, 32 to 33. And King David said, call me Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, and Benaniah, son of Jehoda. And they came before the king. The king also said unto them, bring with you the servant of your Lord. And cause Solomon, my son, to ride upon mine own mule and bring him down to Gihon. All right, Gihon. David wants Solomon to be crowned in Gihon. All right, on a mule. A mule is a hybrid creature, y'all. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny because... What is Solomon going to run around and do? Create all these hybrids, right? Running around here, planting his seed in women of other nations, right? He had over 700 concubines or something, right? 300 wives, some ridiculous number. Those are alliances, guys. To get married is a covenant. It's an alliance. If a public ceremony was the only point of Solomon's anointing, we're right here. Sorry, guys. If a public ceremony was the only point of Solomon's anointing as the next king, why would he have to be taken out of the city to Gihon? What was there about Gihon that was necessary for the anointing of the king? What was it, y'all? What exactly was it? Could it be this oil, this pipeline, huh? You got to be king of the oil, man. King of the black gold, right? Solomon is the richest king, right? This person asks a really good question. Like, why was he not crowned in Hebron, right? Instead, he's crowned in Gihon. What is Gihon, guys? Let's, let's go do some more digging like we like to do here on the front line. Let's go see. Gihon. Let's get to it. Abraham Publications. The name Gihon, summary, means gusher. What? An oil well from which oil flows profusely. Now, see, if I hadn't pressed on that, guys, I wouldn't even know it was right there. <laughs> because, guys, I just was here for the word gusher. But look at the definition. Huh? So when Shamar keep telling y'all this was oil wells and not water wells now y'all can believe me because on google they're going to tell you it's an oil well from which oil flows profusely sorry profusely without being pumped this oil is just flowing okay guys you want to believe me now y'all want to believe me now that that good old king david right your favorite king well, one of them, guys, we know we like, they like King James too, though, don't they? But everybody's enamored with David, right? They think David's coming back. Their JC figure is coming back. Okay, I'm not enamored with, with David. All right, on the front line, you're going to get the truth. David exploited the land. David began to plunder the land. Let's keep going. Watch this. So the gusher, right? So Gihon means gusher from the verb to burst forth. The name Gihon in the Bible. Go ahead and do yourself a favor and read that. The second Gihon. So they're going to say that this, this Gihon mentioned in the Bible is out of um, Eden, right? It's a river. It says it flows around the whole land of Cush. The second Gihon mentioned in the Bible is a place near Jerusalem where Solomon was anointed king. All right. The name is spelled, apparently, this Gihon was some kind of waterway as King Hezekiah reroutes its course. So later we get King Hezekiah that wants to re sorry, reroute this gas line, huh? Hmm, sounds familiar. Sounds a little bit like that Keystone XL project. Let's keep going. 
The name Gihon is derived from the verb Gia. Sounds a bit like Gaia, don't it, guys? Hmm. Huh. Meaning to birth, burst forth. The verb Gaia means to burst forth. It's applied to rivers and human births. Human collectives, such as families and tribes, are in the Bible often symbolized as mountains. Shout out to, uh, I think it was Eternal that made a reference to uh, the mountains. Hence, births signify valleys and associations with rivers, okay? Uh, the verb isn't used in the Bible. Its meaning is unknown. However, it means valley and is used frequently. Therefore, at least seven named valleys. Now, ain't that interesting? The seven cities of gold, perhaps? Under the seven daughters? Huh? Look at Unifis sending us something. Unifis is on fire, y'all. She is. I'm researching Rockefeller. She's researching Rothschilds. We never even talk about it. Ah, sis, I don't want anybody to see your messages. I'll call you back. All right. The seven named valleys mentioned in the Old Testament. All right, let's put the phone on. Do not disturb. Let's keep going, right? I like that because I didn't realize that there was this seven valleys mentioned in the Old Testament. We're going to have to dig on that. Let's go. The observation that every valley shall be exalted. <laughs> oh, every daughter is going to be exalted and every mountain made low. Huh? ties into the principle of rebirth via which is peopled a world in which every sorry individual every individual is king and high priest and utterly free notice they didn't put queen right but every individual is free you see how they do us guys anyway let's keep going we're free i ain't worried about that all right h-a-w Theological world book of the Old Testament calls the river the gusher or bubbler, although bubbler seems a bit too tame. Jones Dictionary of the Old Testament proper names reads great breaking forth. It's going to say of waters, but that seems a bit over the top, right? We know here on the front line, it ain't no damn water because they don't already told us that a gusher is an oil well, right? All right, so they're going to say that uh, the Norse Study Bible will say that it sounds like bursting forth, okay? They're going to say it sounds, sorry, sounds like bursting forth right here, right? But they say at the publications, they surmise that the geographically, sorry, that geographically the Gihon corresponds with the Great Rift Valley of Ethiopia. The story of four rivers, however, most generally tells the evolution of human civilization, right? The four rivers is reminding me, guys, of the four races of men. The medicine wheel, right? The black, white, yellow, and the red, right? All right, let's keep going. It says that they've made it, they tied this together um, and linked it with human civilization, all right? So on your own time, you know, be researching this stuff, guys. But anyway... Gihon means a gusher, which a gusher is an oil well from which oil flows profusely. So Solomon is count, crowned king of the wells. Huh. Check it out. That's what David did. Uh-huh. Made him ride a hybrid creature. Interesting. Three Forks history. Let's keep moving along, guys. Let's talk about these oil wells. Black gold. Three Forks history. Black gold coined in Muskegee. Native American used the natural seeps of oil for generations, but this unrefined petroleum was primarily considered to have medicinal uses. Right, guys? Because that's when they were linking it to what they called snake oil, right? We're going to get into Roosevelt, not Roosevelt, sorry. We're going to get into, uh, what's this guy's name? Not Rothschild. Unifers is doing Rothschild. I'm looking uh, Rockefeller. Thank you. Good old Uncle Bill, which I think might be from the tribe of Judah, guys, but we'll get into that. 
All right, America's, uh, let's get down to it. They were using it as medicinal oil, all right? Edwin Drake drilled America's first oil wells in Pennsylvania in 1859, ushering in commercial production of the black crude. Right, guys, because remember, what we just read about the Gihon is that it didn't need to be touched. It just bubbled. All right, guys, didn't need to be touched. All right, these guys are drilling. Big, big difference. They are doing drilling, which reminds me of Moses striking the rock. Let's keep going. Soon, new uses were being developed for it as a lamp oil, right? We, we read about that, how in Assyria they were using the lamp oil. Well, that's called kerosene, guys. All right. And as a lubricant for engines. The Indian Territory, sorry, in Indian Territory, residents were aware of oil's existence under the soil. But without efficient ways to extract it, not without efficient ways to extract it. They knew better than to extract it. They were the guardians of the land. I will say it again. Israel knew this oil was there. Israel, under Joseph, was the guardian of the, of the land. And this is why Egypt experiences that surplus based off of Joseph showing up. He understood how to take care of the land. Let's keep going. All right. It says there was little interest in drill, sorry, drilling wells, right? They weren't interested in drilling wells. They knew it would destroy the earth. All right, let's keep going. Our plane, right? Not until the popularity of the automobile and its need for gasoline was there a lucrative demand for petroleum production. There are different accounts about where the first oil well was drilled in Indian tour, sorry, territory. One source says that Lewis Ross was digging a salt well on the ground, sorry, the Grand Saline of the Grand River in 1859 and hit oil instead. His well produced about 10 gallons of oil a day for about a year. Another source says a well near Wapanuka in Attuck, sorry, Ataka County was the first, dating to 1875. Still another source is that the first deep well was drilled in 1884 near Lehigh. All right, guys, so I want y'all to keep, look, in 1897, a well was drilled near Bartlesville that seemed to have triggered to attract investors, right? So now we're getting investors. By the early 1900s, oil and gas were right here was spreading across Oklahoma, right? The red people, as more investors put money into oil exploration, right? And drilling. As great pools of oil were discovered at locations such as Glen Pool and Cushing. Now that's not funny to me because Cushing, they're gonna say is a uh, territory of Moshe, right? So let's keep going, interesting. Didn't he strike the rock? Let's keep going. Um, almost overnight, the individuals, sorry, those individuals willing to take a risk in drilling wells also became wealthy from the oil that sometimes shot into the air in great gushers, right? The oil is going to flow profusely. Sometime in the 1910, the term black gold came into use to refer to petroleum. Oklahoma and Texas had sorry, surpassed nearly every other state in the number of oil wells in production. So the two might very well have first been in use, sorry, the term in Oklahoma. The phrase spread rapidly and is in common use today. In fact, a journalist named Grant McGee is believed to be the one of the first, if not the very first to use the term black gold I so they're re referring to petroleum as black gold all right remember Solomon is gold rich Solomon is crowned at Gihon Sol Solomon is given control of this gusher I right, let's keep going when I told y'all it was oil wells though right I had to show y'all what I was talking about let's keep going so 
Uh, we've read already right here on the front line that in Tulsa, they had black gold, right? No surprise because Tulsa is in Oklahoma. They called that area Black Wall Street. What were they trading on Black Wall Street, guys? Who, who is in control? Who's at the wheel right now in some of these areas controlling some of these pipeline access, right? We're going to see in the states over Colorado, right? A tale of two tribes. Who do we have here? The Utes. Colorado Southern Utes want to drill, right? And then there's another, uh, another group of uh, so-called natives that are actually battling them. They don't want them to drill anymore. They're starting to recognize whether they were entrusted, where did this on article go? Whether they were entrusted to um, this pipeline or not, you know what I mean? Whether they're Israel or not, they recognize by now the danger that this pipeline is causing, right? They recognize, these people right here, the, the shoe people, sorry, the Sioux people, the shoe people, <laughs> the Sioux people, you know, whether they're Israel or not, recognize that this is causing major damage to the planet and as a result they're trying to step in it's like I told you guys here on this front line this is killing the planet quote the plane y'all it's killing our plane y'all removing the substance from out of the ground guys to me this is almost like taking blood from out of the ground Right. What if what if this flow is like a blood flow in your arm or or the plasma in it? Right, guys. This is what they're removing from the earth. And the UTs, as a result, they're money hungry. Like I keep showing you with the tribe of Judah, didn't I show you all those grandmas up up in the Supreme Court trying to get their cut of this black gold that was traded? on Black Wall Street. I showed y'all. Let, let's look at that again. Let's let's look at what Judah, right? What Judah is up to right here, right? The scepter will not depart. They hold control of that pipeline, guys. The creator told us the scepter will not depart from Judah nor the ruler's staff are between his feet until to he it belongs shall come and the obedience of the nation shall be theirs. I told y'all in more general terms that would say theirs. It will be theirs. Shiloh. Right guys? I showed y'all that. The UT's got a higher credit rating than Wells Fargo, guys. All for the strength of this well. I want to show y'all that and then I'm going to be out of here. For some reason, let's exit the mobile version. Let's see if it'll pull up in the desktop. Ah, there we go. All right, let's talk about it. The Southern UT Indian tribe of southwestern Colorado. Why is it putting me through all of this? Y'all saw it. Has a higher credit rating than Wells Fargo, guys. Go back, pause the video to, the, to that article real briefly in the top. And you're going to see they have a higher credit rating. All right. So could that be because Solomon was given control of these good shirts, right? They're Judah. Solomon is Judah. Solomon got all these treaties. Huh? Are those contracts for those wells? Are they? Because Solomon has the gushers. The gushers of Gihon. Much love to you guys. We're going to talk next week about what Solomon was doing with those gushers. 
Let's talk next week about some of these contracts that Solomon procured as this king of the southern tribes. The southern tribes of Judah with his good old crunchy dad appointed by none other than David. Thankfully, we ain't no David lovers over here, are we, frontline? No. We're Israel lovers. And we recognize our chief with Sarah. Much love to you guys from the frontline. Thanks. I'll see you guys next week. Take care.